to me tonight. Quite good. Help with some homework. Right. What time? And Linda hats. Sorry, Mrs. Phillips. Yeah, got to do geography. Can't do it on my own. Okay. I'll try and get my dad to drop me. Is your mum at home? Uh, I don't know, but come round about six thirty. Yeah. Maybe making homework first. Yeah. Do you know what she said today? What? She asked if Hitler was the one with the moustache. God, that's ridiculous. Even I know that. I'm completely fit, isn't it? <laughs> Hi. Hi. Oh my God! Look at that for movement. Anne really fancies you, Lawrence. Stupid bloody idiot. Oh, he didn't hear you. Don't worry. What do you mean? He couldn't exactly not have heard, could he? See you here. Thursday, four o'clock. <laughs> well, I don't anticipate any trouble at all. Well, I could come down. Wait, yeah, huh? Well, say 5,000. Well, I mean, if you could drop 5,000, then that would obviously do it, yeah. Um, look, I tell you what, can so... I call you back? Hello, Norma. Oh, hello. Would you mind going in? Thank you. I'm Dr. Kramer. She's in the living room. Through to her. Hey, what's going on? Let's go home, Anne. There's nothing here to see. Why up? Is it PG or something? <laughs> extensive damage to the cranium and associated distortion of the facial features. Probable cause, a blunt instrument, perhaps several blows. There is evidence of CSF fluid and multiple blood loss from the intracranial injury. How long has she been dead? Oh, less than an hour, I'd say. Since. I'm sorry, Norman, you can't go in there. And you can't interview her without me. You have no right to keep me from her. I demand to see that inspector now. Your daughter's fine. As soon as the D.I.S. finished talking to her, you can take her home. I want to go into that house. I want to see the officer in charge. I'm the officer in charge of this house. I'll tell you that no one goes into that house until I get... I'm Inspector Gates. This is Detective Sergeant Black. Now, there's nothing to be frightened of, Anne. 
but we must try and put things back as they were before you knock them over. Come on, sir. You can't stay here. We're trying to conduct a murder Do you think you can help us do that? Very busy. Now move on, please. Right. I've had a cigarette. Thanks. Yeah, those things could kill you. So could he. What can you remember? Kitchen. Drawers pulled out, tablecloth hanging. Floor. Knives, forks, broken cup, canister, silver, silver colour, bits of paper, coupons. Then into the hall, foam was pulled out and... I don't remember anything else. Did you drink the milk? Botlin's Central Training Board. Did he drink it? Aren't you going to arrest me? And protect you from him? No chance. I have an important position at this town. Oh, have you changed your job then? Being manager of the Downshire Building Society is a prominent and exposed position. And I can't afford to be the father of a daughter who keeps getting up to such bloody stupid escapades. And this one, this one, words fail me. I wish they would. Stop it, she's been punished enough. Either I'm crazy, Eileen, or you are. But she hasn't been punished at all. That's the trouble, well, I'll punish her. Oh. Do you hear me, Anne? You're going to stop this stupidity, or I'm going to stop paying the fees for that expensive school. Great. I never wanted to go to the snotty hole in the first place. And you couldn't afford it if I wasn't an assisted place. Will you stop it, the both of you? The murder has been linked to a number of break-ins all in the area of Jenner's Wood. After a previous serious assault, the police expressed fears only last week that the intruder might strike again. It appears that 52-year-old Lucy Travers disturbed him and he savagely assaulted her. He then got away by motorbike through the wood behind the victim. this not in bed yet now look young man you're not the one suffering from shock but you will be if i catch you she's not letting me down i'm right into bed now come on story time what's in me tonight shh you pipe down Anne's upset she's trying to sleep come on young man i'm going to tell you a story and then you're going to sleep but i don't feel sleepy you will when the time oh pooch i haven't seen you for a while Night, night, pet. Sleep tight. I'm sure I don't have to tell anyone about the most horrible murder in the village yesterday. The police have warned me it's possible the man responsible may strike again. Our beautiful setting unfortunately makes us particularly vulnerable. Jenna's wood is strictly out of bounds. You must Leave the school in pairs, taking the main road 
only. Girls chosen for the swimming pool appeal reception this evening must arrange to be accompanied home by an adult. Mrs. Barnett, Valerie Miles, head girl, 1985, has agreed to be... Well, agreed to consider being treasurer of the old Griffins. Oh! I'm sure you can tell her it's important without being in any way owners. Hello, Miles. Valerie. How do you do? Uh, understand you're writing the definitive English textbook. No, oh, uh, no, it's, um, it's radical rather than definitive, Miss Montrose. Oh, thank you, darling. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's only one or two hours a week. That sounds highly dangerous. Oh, right. Okay. You just don't like having your arm twisted, do you? God, look who it is. On the contrary, here I like the girls to learn alternative views of the world. Would you like a canopy? Yes, I think that's so important. Yeah. Don't you? Well, yes. You would have published it? I learned a lot. No. Polly, don't take them. I did them especially for Miss Montrose. Okay? Right, right. Well, I saw Helen last Tuesday and she said she would be here. What are you doing? I've seen her. So you'll still need to teach? Oh, um... No, I... I, I, I have a job here, if you're interested. Mrs Phillips is going on maternity leave and I need someone to cover for. Excuse me. Oh, yes. Thank you, Miss Montrose. Very kind uh, offer, I... He's given up teaching. Haven't you, David? <laughs> it's only temporary, Val. It's helping out. Given up? He was stabbed. He was in hospital for three months. Well, the school was an inner London bin. Hardly see much evidence of knives here. You came here to write. That's the point. Uh, the idea is to stimulate the book, not stop it, Valerie. <sighs> Canapé, Miss Montrose. Thank you. These ones are particularly good. Thank you. I didn't think you'd come. Lots of girls I know would. I'm not lots of girls, and you don't know me. I know your name and where you live. So what are you going to be when you grow up? Private detective. <laughs> hey! You're a bit quick, aren't you? No, I'm not. I'm not quick at all, that's the trouble. I'm... I'm 17. Oh, I see. I'm... <laughs> me, will ya? Well, she said you fancied me. Fancy you? You're the sort of nice boy my mother would like me to bring home to tea. Oh! You won't turn me on like that. Well, how, how will I turn you on? I never asked anyone before. Would you like to come to tea? Well, that's the sort of thing I do with Jessamy. Who's Jessamy? Your girlfriend? No. Well, sort of. She's a family friend. Do you grope Jessamy? No. <laughs> no, you, you don't grope Jessamy. <laughs> you don't grope Jessamy, but you grope me. Well, I didn't mean... What else does it mean? You do do it! Oh, that's it, is it? That's what they told you around the bike sheds, is it? That's what you came for. That's all you're interested in, is no. it? Well, come on then, if that's what you want. Mm. Mm. Wait, I've got, I've got a thing. I can feel it. No, I mean, oh, use mine. Thank you. You've. You've got something. It's my period, you stupid wanker! Quite right, Dad. I'm my own worst enemy. I don't know how you can stand it sometimes. What's she after? <laughs> Hit it in one, Ben. That's not fair. She means it, don't you? 
I know. I know you do, Anna. Can I clean your car? Fiver, wash and polish. Told you, told you. Well, you could clean the car, but you can't, because I'm going out. Again? Stoke Pryor. Those mortgages. Here. That's in advance. Two washes. Last time I washed the car, you didn't give me a fiver. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. He's in a good mood. Will you do one of your upside down cakes on Sunday? Why, oh, who's coming to tea? Nobody. Prince Charming. You never know, do you? <laughs> hey, Ben. I know you're rich. I'll see you in my ghetto blaster for 15 quid. Ten. <laughs> it's a deal. you done now? She's been arrested. Come on, girls. Away from the window. Come on. Back to your desks. Sorry. Are you feeling better? It was a shock, Miss Montrose. I thought he was Jenna. That is precisely why I forbade you to go there. Jenna? He owned the wood in the 15th century. It's what the girls are calling the murderer. When did you leave your case in the wood, Anne? Last night. I told you under no circumstances. Miss Montrose, I wonder if I might... Were you with someone in the wood? No. This is a murder inquiry, Anne. Were you meeting someone? No. Why were you there? How much pocket money do you get a week? Three pounds. What's that got to do with it? Is this yours? Yeah. Where'd you get it? Fell out of your pocket in the wood. This, uh... 28 pounds and 15 pence. How do you come to have so much, yeah? What do you mean? You think I did it? No. You think he was the thief and I was helping him? Who? Who did you meet in the wood? No one! Just a boy. Tell the inspector his name. Lawrence. Lawrence Churchman. The magistrate's son. Lives at the lodge. Please don't ask him, please. He'll never talk to me again. 
I borrowed the money from my parents, from Linda. I even sold my ghetto blaster to my brother to buy Lawrence a new bicycle wheel. We quarrelled. I broke it. Please. I'm not a thief. I... What is it, Anne? I do some stupid things, but I swear I've never stolen anything in my life. Let's go. <laughs> Sit on the floor, spread yourselves out. Up on your chair. We would like you to put the case for doing Heinrich Ibsen's Doll's House. Um, well, because it was the first um, play to show how women should free themselves um, and yeah, stop, yeah, you know, yeah. relying on, on, on men. All right, Melissa, hold on a second. Holly, John Godber, why? Well, it's something we can all relate to. There's lots of teachers in it. We could mimic some of the teachers here. <laughs> all right, well, look, let's have a state of play vote. Anybody who's undecided to stay in the middle. Anybody who wants to go with Johnny Ibsen, go over here. And Johnny Godber, over there. Thank you. Off you go. <laughs> Eight of you. You. Why do you think you should be doing John Godber? I think we should do John Godber. Because um, he's more modern and up to date. Sorry. Hello, Anne. Interested in joining the drama group? No, sir. Thank you. I get enough drama at home. Yeah, great. Check out the talent. <laughs> <laughs> what was it like? A piece of string in a bucket. How was yours? Man, you never gave me a phone number. Oh, Go yeah. On. Great. Thanks. See you then. What did you do a stupid thing like that for? What? Give me a number. I didn't. I gave him yours. <laughs> 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 Anne? She does car, isn't it? We could ask him for a lift. Yeah, great idea. Let's do that. Anne? No. Well, maybe. I don't know. Oh, my God, Linda, I don't know. What am I going to tell my mother? Your mother? I've got to tell her about it. I'd be deceiving her as well if I did.
Where have you been? Linda's? Well, you weren't there when I called. I must have just left. Mm. What do you want to drink? Gin tea, ice, hold the lemon. I went to Stoke. I know. It's written all over your face. I told you not to go there at this... What's happened? What is it, Pen? Nothing. Why are you so upset? I'm not upset. Yes, you are. For God's sake, Mother, I know when I'm upset and when I'm not upset and I'm not upset. Down. You need it with what you get up to. You were in Stoke Prior last night, I hear. I had to tell him, Pet, I'm sorry, but I've been so worried about you. What on earth are you apologising for? So that's why you've cooked this. You feel guilty. Guilty? You're the one who should feel guilty. You told us you were at Linda's last night. You deceived us. Now eat that food your mother's cooked for you. What's Icelandic for comeback? I don't know, Ben. What is Icelandic for comeback? Yo yo. <laughs> Is it? Is it really? See, you learn something new every day, Eileen. Yo, yo. I saw you in Jokers. You were in the pub? Drinking? No, I saw his car. That's why I went in. Eat your breakfast. You were spying on me. Oh. I see what you're thinking. I was with Mrs Hedges from Collins and Denton. You were kissing her. Anne. He was. Damn right I was kissing her, after she sewed up all those mortgages for me. It wasn't that sort of kiss. Shut up! There's an evil, wicked streak in you, Anne Devonish. Just because you've been caught out, you're trying to turn it on your father. I'd been caught out! That's enough. Now finish your breakfast. You finish it! Stop it! Stop it! <laughs> Now, this critic thinks, for what it's worth, that Emily Bronte tells the story in a plain frame to make the melodramatic picture more acceptable. Anything in that, do you think? Or in that weird, strange, bizarre... My mother knew about that woman. She knew. Is that it was in her face. I didn't need to say anything. God. Right. Did Emily like regard it as melodrama? You've got to phone her. I can't phone her. You have and? to. More drama at home? <laughs> All right, settle down. Thank you. And she, Anne, it might do wonders for your understanding of the oeuvre of Miss Bronte if, if you came and sat at the front of the class. Thank you. Right, Holly, could you read from the bottom of that page? Just to underline this point. Hinley and Cathy? Mm hmm. Hinley and Cathy contented themselves with looking and listening till peace was restored. Then, both began searching their father's pockets for the presents he had promised them. The former was a boy of fourteen, but when he drew out what had been a fiddle crushed to morsels in the great coat, he blubbered aloud. And Cathy, when she learned that the master had lost her whip in attending on the stranger, showed her humour by grinning, earning for her pains a sound blow from her father to teach her cleaner manners. They entirely refused to have it in bed with them, or even in their room, and I had no more sense, so I put it on the landing of the stairs, hoping it might be gone on the morrow. By chance, or else attracted by hearing his voice, it crept to Mr. M. Furnishall's door, and there he found it.
somebody in there. <laughs> Miss Wood, I have to fix one of the lockers. Would you mind seeing if the coast's clear? Well, it's not to me. They should all be in class. Well, I thought I smelled cigarette smoke. Somebody. Why is this window open? Well, it was shut five minutes ago. I walked past it on my way here. I'll tell Miss Montrose and make sure that window's secured. Right. There was a murderer in the school. Oh my god! He got into a revision. Where? Through the Clayton window, next to our classroom. Mr. Rylands is positive he saw a man running into those trees oh, shortly yeah. after we found the open window. The girl said she had twenty pounds and a cash card in the wallet. Oh, Nothing sir? else has been reported missing, and there are no signs of a forced entry. Sir, Mr. Miles. Yes. What is it? Yeah, no, I, I, I can't believe it. I mean, in broad daylight. Oh, look, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to go. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry for troubling you so late at night. Okay, thank you very much. They're saying the murderer was in the school. Well, Anne wasn't. Linda now admits that she bunked off before the alarm was raised. Nobody's seen her since. we better call the police. Hi, Dad. Hello, Ben. Um, just get your own breakfast, will you? Any news? There's been another murder. Where? The Stoke Prior side of the woods. A woman had her head battered. Like the last one. We moved here because of that wood. It was so beautiful. Now I can't even look at it. Took me ages to get through to the police again. Um, they want a photograph of her. There's a much nicer one of her. <laughs> Anne Devonish is missing. The police will be here later today to interview anyone who spoke to Anne before she disappeared yesterday. We will now sing hymn number 491, Glorious Things of Thee Are Spoken. We were so worried. Where have you been, eh? You all right, Anne? 
There was a click in my head. I was frightened. Where have you been for the last three days? I don't know. What were you doing outside the Travers house? Could I have a cigarette, please? You don't smoke. I yeah, know I don't, Mum, but he gave me one last time. What happened to the clothes you were wearing, in? We don't know where they came from. You should have seen her. Where are they? He wants to find out if there's any blood on them. Don't you? You don't think... I don't think anything, Mrs. Devonish. But there's been a second murder, only a few miles from the first, and we simply have to account for people's movements. Jesus Christ. Worried about the effect it will have on his mortgages. Where are the clothes? In the washing machine. When my grave broke up again, some second guest to entertain, and he that digs it spies a bracelet of bright hair about the bone. Will he not let us alone and think that there a loving couple lies who thought that this device might be some way to make their souls at the last busy day meet at this grave and make a little stay? If this fall in a time or land where misdevotion doth command, then he that digs us up will bring us to the bishop and the king and make us relics. Then thou shalt be a Mary Magdalene, and I a something else thereby. Now, that ooh, lovely, ambiguous tone. You see, John Donne was famously what is known as a dualist. He was both a passionately devout Catholic and a celebrator of carnal love. You with us, Anne? Not for very much longer, Mr. Mars. I'm leaving at the end of this term. Well, you'd better make the most of it then, hadn't you? So, even at the last busy day. What does Dunn mean by that? The end of the world? Mm-hmm. The millennium? Mm-hmm. The resurrection? Yes, resurrection. The day when all the souls rise up looking for their bodies, you know, arm here, leg there. <laughs> but you see, even then, Dunn has his relic, his charm, his bracelet of bright hair about the bone, so that, even at the last busy day, we can meet at this grave and make a little stay. Now, what might you mean by that? Make love. Yes, that's right, Melissa, make love. Could you write me an essay about your feeling for this Telephone wires had been cut like severed arteries. In the front room, some men were bending over a woman. Her knees were drawn up as if she was asleep. Then one of the men moved away, and I saw she had no face. Only an eye was staring at me from a mess of blood and bone. Your essay is about the murder, Anne, rather than the poem. It, it seems to me that you are somehow 
involved with the murder, or, or rather, it got involved with you. If that's the case, it, it must have been very frightening. It's, um, it's terribly vivid. Do you think you might have an idea who, uh, who was responsible for the murder? I don't know. Um, what do you mean, you don't know, Anne? You don't know who you know. That's all I mean, sir. Anyway, I'm leaving, so there's no need for you to bother about that rubbish. I know I can't write about love like Melissa, sir. All right. Hand these out, will you? Oh, sorry, sir. Sorry. It's not rubbish. It's a remarkable piece of writing. Oh, it's wonderful. If you get the weather, um, you can't beat it really, but the top of getting the weather. Mr. and Mrs. Devnish, if you'd like to follow me, Miss Montrose will see you now. Have you got your front door key, Marlon? Yes, of course I have, darling. Well, well, well. Well, 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 well. Do you want to know what Mr. Miles said to Miss Montrose about you? Remarkable mind? Outstanding was the word he used, Eileen. Get it right. Well, whatever it was, I went so red, I flushed all over. Highly creative imagination. Well, we know all about that, don't we, Eileen? Hello. Earth calling Anne. Oh, leave her alone. Let her relax. She's had a terrible time, but now it's settled. Thank God. What's settled? You're going to stay on. I am not. I'm going to Stoke Comprehensive. Now, look. Norman, you know what we agreed. What did you agree? That you should decide. That you should go where you feel happiest. Oh, yes. My bank balance will certainly be happier. You're only making the biggest mistake you'll ever make in your life. But so long as you're happy, that's the main thing. Hello, Norman Devonish. Hello, Mr. Miles. Yes, I'll just see if Anne's here. Hello? Thank you. I, I, I don't know what to say. Give it to me! Give it to me! <laughs> that was my brother, you prat. You as gone on miles as Melissa. <laughs> and the small bundle of shivers growing afraid of it all and beginning to cry. Was this? 
Is that what you can do tonight? Hold your noise! cried a terrible voice uh, as a man started up from among the graves at the side of the church porch. Keep still, you little devil, or I'll cut you. Now, great expectations. Go to your seat. I found it on the floor, sir. You continue reading where I left off. Thank you. What's up with him? You know. You know he was stabbed. She's off the wall! She's not out. I always thought you were mad. Why didn't you leave like you said you were What did you think you were doing? was awful. Oh, don't worry. You don't have to go back. You'll be able to get on with the book. Come in. You don't remember taking this? You mean this morning? From the moment you left the classroom to when you came round in the wood, you have no idea where you were, what you did? Has, has this happened before, Anne? Is this what you were trying to tell me about in the staff room? Would you like to see the school counsellor? She should see her doctor. Hmm. Will you do that, Anne? Take that back. Explain, you're going to the doctor. Thank you. Hello? Emma? <sighs> Take it back and Miss Montrose will chuck you out. 
You'll have given her the excuse she wanted. Yes. Is that what you wanted? No, read the figures back to me. Is that an explanation of what happened at school this afternoon? Well, when did you call? Because... Because you were frightened of staying. No, we'll just because you were... You were frightened... Frightened of your gift? Oh, yes, yes, Anne. You have the most precious gift in the world. Talent. Hey, don't you realise how talented that vicious little performance was? Don't you realise what you could do if... if you controlled it instead of it controlling you? Right, OK, I'll be there at six. Bye. to get rid of you. It's such a waste. Stupid, stupid waste. I'll take care of it. You forget it. I'll find it and return it to Miss Montrose. Only to your talent, Anne. Lie only to the examiners who have none. You keep what you really think to yourself. Tell teachers and lecturers only what they want to hear. And in the future, you can do anything. You can be. Manchester tonight. Are you ready? Yes. Cool. She's crossed, isn't she? Kitty Louisa Hutt. Sorry, Miss Devilish. I really never expected to be passing the first time. Well done. You only had two minor faults of observation. You must keep checking that rearview mirror all the time. You might think about lessons for motorway driving. Very different kettle of fish from Ashminster High Street. Anne? Florence. How are you? I'm... Uh, yeah, sir, you'll need these. Oh, all right. thank, thank you. you very much. I just passed my driving test. Oh, well done. <laughs> well, you should celebrate. Would you like to come to tea? Why not? I've still got it. Well, I should hope so. No, the bike wheel. It's on my wall. A sort of sculpture? Well, it's as good as anything in the tape. Mm, better. I know what it means. What do you call it? Jenner's wood. They never caught him, did they? No. So what is this place? Oh, it's somebody's weekend cottage. I clean it for them. Easy money. They're never there. Can I see you again? I've got so much to do. A-levels next year. You could teach me to drive. OK. You're underage, though. Only just. Mr. Masters, hello?
Hello. Anne, I was wondering what had happened to you. Oh, hi, Mum. I know, I'm sorry. But I met someone and I've still got this place to clean up. What's taking so long? Mr. Master told me he wasn't going to be here, but he, he must have changed his mind or lent the place to someone. See, well, the supper will be ready at seven. Okay. I'll see you in about half an hour. Bye. Excellent, Mr. Marks. You have my full permission to proceed with those reservations. You do sound very like Monty. Just a touch more of the acid smile. Uh, have you noticed this at Lady of Secrecy she got there? Yes. Excellent, Mr. <laughs> Marks. You have my full permission to proceed with those reservations. Good. Florence. Mr. Miles, Lawrence Churchman. Lawrence, Mr. Miles. Uh, hello, Lawrence. Please see. Uh oh, I'm so sorry. 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 All right, I've got it. Ooh, Mrs. Miles is rather lucky tonight. That's a very good year. Thank you, Melissa. I'll leave the price on, sir. Tell me, do you think it's better to decant the wine before serving it? No, Melissa. I tend to drink wine straight from the bottle. I find it improves the flavour enormously. <laughs> All right, that's enough, everybody. Thank you very much. Sir, I was going to ask you about the poem. Oh, yes. Uh, um... Can you pull over and let me have a drive? All right, but I, I have to be with you. Oh, please let me have a go on my own. No way. Only down to the village and back! And stop so bloody stupid! What's happened? It's, it's Valerie. Uh, Valerie's dead. She, she's been killed. Oi! Where the hell have you been? I've had an accident. What have you done to the car? Get in! Going too fast. <laughs> Look, you've done enough damage for one day to yourself and the car. Stop and let me drive. What's wrong with you? Slow down. Uh oh. them to pick us up. Stop. Shoved her over, then finished her off with a poker. Milk bottle, phone wire cut. It's in. Any sign of bike tracks? No, he used the car this time. But he might have had a bit of an accident. Who's got the hump there? Must be mine not off, isn't it? 
Any chance of forensic doing that in under two months? Any chance of them doing it, period, sir? We've come to the end of our budget. Yeah, well, so has she. Put a priority on it. Um, sorry, Mr. Miles, but since you found your wife, we're going to have to ask you to come with us and change your clothing. You might have picked up hairs, fibre. You check the windows and the doors. Nothing. No sign of forcible entry. She must have opened the door too. No, he had a key. Sir, we're going to have to do this down the station, sir. Oh, let's see. Whoever did this would have to be covered in blood. I mean, covered in it. You want anything uh, ridiculous? Yeah, make sure you get a good shot of that side of her face. I love her. Come on, Andy. Andy get him out of here. It's all right. He's on his way. What's the hurry? She's dead. It is Jenna, isn't it? You're sure about the time Mr. Miles drove in? Quite sure. I saw his car. A minute or two later, he came running over. No more than that. Two minutes. At the outside. Thank you, Miss Dobson. I'll send someone in to take a formal statement. I think it's actually about the worst thing you well, could I possibly think we need be doing. Well, I tell them where we were why? that night and what happened. Anne, why are you doing this? Hello. Detective Sergeant Black, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, you probably don't remember me. Uh, Anne Debnish. That's from, right. Uh, Ashminster. Right, nice to see you. What are you doing it? I've come to see Inspector Gates if he's around. Oh, yeah, you phoned, didn't you? I'll take you up to him. Inspector Gates. I was in Staunton that night, you see, and, well, of course, you saw me. Well, what were you doing in Staunton that night, then? We went out for a drive. We? Oui. I was with my boyfriend, Lawrence. The young man who brought you here. We saw the police cars, and I had an awful feeling. How do you think you can help us, Anne? I was in the area. Are you all right? No, I'm not. I'm sorry. Uh, get some water. Migraine comes out of the blue. Thank you. And how did you get that bruise? Breaking the law. Not wearing a seatbelt. Lawrence had to break suddenly when a rabbit shot out. 
You were saying you were in the area. Yes, I was with Lawrence. I keep seeing that... that other house. That poor woman. Everything gets so confused, so muddled. Anne. I know it was a terrible sight. But that was some time ago now, and you really should try and put it out of your head. I will. I will. Thank you. I'm sorry I took so much of your time. You were right to come in. And it's good to see you again. Looking so different. <laughs> Would you ask your boyfriend if he'd see me? Of course. What did you tell him? Oh, I couldn't tell him that you were driving, could I? Don't, please. Do you know what you've done? I've never told a lie in my life. Not like that. My mother is a magistrate. What did you say? That we were having a... a passionate time in the... picnic area. <laughs> I'm not laughing! <laughs> oh, poor Lawrence. And what was all that stupid stuff about breaking for a rabbit? It was you that did that! Stop it! Stop it! That damage is going to cost hundreds of pounds! Well, you can stick it on your wall with a bicycle wheel, then. <laughs> oh, Lawrence, I do need you. It's too soon after that horrible thing. It, it wouldn't be right. Well, he's only your bloody teacher. Sorry. I'm sorry. I know how much he means to you, but my head hurts, my balls ache. Haven't you forgotten something? Oh my god. That would be terrible. Just not done, is it? The worst of crimes. Drive. You're in first. Keep cool, Lawrence. Nobody's going to arrest you. So long as you go out with a magistrate son, speak like Monty, and wear the right hat, you can get away with murder. Watch the road! <laughs> Jenna, they've arrested a man for the murders. Have you heard? Well, now we can open the forbidden window. Do you remember that day? Mm. It was awful. What a relief to think he's no longer out there. We don't have to constantly be looking over our shoulders. Yeah, if we've only made found the right one. You don't be so pathetic. Of course they got the right one. Anne, are you coming? In a minute. Come on, let's go. You're going to come to my house tonight? Yeah, but I've got to do some work. Yeah, I've got some minutes for you. Why do you go around with them, eh? Look, why don't we go out like we used to? To Stoke? I've seen Lawrence tonight. Lawrence, he's in all pain. Hey, where'd you get this from? I found it in the cottage where I clean. Look, it's mine. I chewed the cat. And you've been using it. 
I wouldn't use that disgusting colour. Well, someone has. Look. Didn't you know you'd nix it? Oh, God. Have they started again? The blackouts? Don't be so stupid. Pills have cured all that. Well, at least we know they've caught him. The murdering bastard. My mother knows him. She knows him? He means as a magistrate, Eileen. She gave him nine months for assault, and he was boasting about the murders in prison. That's how they got him. He was a poacher. He used those woods before they took away his gun licence. That's how it all started. Oh, thank God it's over. It's not over until they get a conviction, Eileen. They found the stuff from the first two murders in his house, but... Oh, well, that's it, then. I'm so sorry. It's all my fault. We've been celebrating. Celebrating? Have you been abducting my daughter, Mr. Miles? I'm afraid I have, Mr. Devonish. Yes, I, I ran into Anne in front of the George. She told me that they found the man who murdered my wife. But they haven't. My mother told me. He's confessed to the other two murders, but not killing your wife. But it must be the same man. Of course it is. Come on, Lawrence. We'll just make the film. Bye, Pet. Have a nice time. One for the road, Mr. Miles. No, no, I, I better not. Thank you. Bye. Thank you for the drink. If you see her, will you tell her that I need to speak to her urgently? Of course I will. Okay. Thanks, Miss Devonish. Bye. Hello? Linda. Hi, it's Lawrence. Um, Hiya. Do you have any idea where Anne might be? No, I don't. You haven't seen her? No. She might be in the cottage, though. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, I'll try that. Okay, thanks. Bye. I've been looking everywhere for you. You're spying on me, aren't no, you? No, Anne, I've got to talk Go to you. Go away! Something's happened. Piss off! I've got to talk to you. Darling, it's me. How are you? I'm, uh, I'm all right. What's the matter? What's the matter? What's wrong? What's wrong? You, you just told me to piss off and you're asking me what's wrong. When? What are you talking about? Anne. 
Anne. And I have to see you now. Lawrence, what's happened? Gates came to see me. What did you tell him? Nothing. Stupid story about the rabbit. You were at the Miles' house that evening, weren't you? Oh. Don't fight to me, Anne! Gates knows the car was there. How? The dent. You drove into the post outside their house, didn't you? Remembering or imagining? Imagining, imagining what? I love you, Anne. I just love you, and I don't care what's happened, whatever you've done. Because I think you're the most wonderful person in the whole world. Please don't say that, Lawrence. Please don't say that kind of crap. It's Please. not crap, Anne. I mean it. I know you mean it, but you must stop meaning it. I'm not wonderful. Please. No, please. What were you doing there, Anne? What were you doing at Miles' house? I don't know. I can't remember. Well, it's something to do with Miles, isn't it? With you and Miles. I saw him go into the cottage. There's something going on between you, isn't there? Leave me alone. Leave me alone! Mm -hmm. Isn't she up yet? No, she was up and down in the night, sick. Excitement. First night. I feel like an impresario myself after taking a double page spread in the school programme. Get up, get up! Mum! Mum! Murdered her teddy bear! What happened? What's happened? She pulled her teddy bear. What's the matter? Where's the brooch? What brooch? That's how it all started. Where did she put it? She? Anne with an E! Anne? Anne? Let me go! Anne. What's the matter with her? Go to bed. Just get ready for school. What's happening? Just go! What's going on? Do you remember when Anne used to talk to her teddy about her friend Anne with an E? Oh, for God's sake, Eileen, that was years ago. All kids do that. I asked her to introduce us and she said, no, you wouldn't like her. She's bad.
loving couple lies. Who thought that this device might be some way to make their souls at the last busy day meet at, at this, this grave, grave and make a little stay? Where did you get all that, Pet? She stole them. She? She? Look, I'm not having any of this Anne with an E rubbish. You stole them. But she didn't know what she was doing. What are you talking about? Of course she knew what she was doing, didn't you? Not always. The most expensive education money can buy, and you turn into a thief. Jesus Christ, I'm going to have to get rid of this lot. I mean, return them anonymously. That's what David Miles did before he began fucking me. Don't use that word. For God's sake, Mother, it's not the word you should be worried about. We did it in the cottage. He's been fucking me for over six months. <gasps> Call the school, tell them she's not well. Oh, hello, Mr. Devonish. I'm terribly sorry to drop in unannounced like this, but we're going to be in a bit of a spot tonight if Anne can't do the show. Uh, yeah, well, um, I'm afraid Anne's asleep at the moment. Ah. Right, well, um, you better come in. Thank you. Is Anne all right? Not too good, I'm afraid. Hello, Mrs. Devonish. So what's the matter? She's been a bit odd. Disturbed. Saying some funny things. Filthy things. Norman. Well, I've got to tell the man what she's been saying about him, Arnie. Right, I see. Uh, I think I can guess. It's, um, it's an occupational hazard, I'm afraid. It's my fault. My fault entirely. I must have been spending too much time with her, putting her under too much pressure. There's no truth in it, then. I'm sorry you feel you have to ask that, Mr. Devonish. You knew as much about teenage fantasies as I do. Oh, I do. Believe me, I do. I told you so. She hasn't been taking our pills, Mr. Mars. That's what this is all about. Right, well, uh, I'd better make a move. I've got to do something about this show tonight. Oh, hello, Anne. Sorry. It's all right. I'm sure I'll be able to work something out without you. It's such a shame, though. If only you could have seen her doing Miss Montrose. Devastating. Are you sure you're not up to it, pet? Would you just give me a couple of moments with her? 
Thank you. Why don't you pop the kettle? Killed her, didn't I? Come here. You haven't told them, have you? Who? You must say nothing, absolutely nothing. You found me there, didn't you? You remember that? I can remember crashing the car. Oh. Kate's now as long as told me. a matter of time before they find out what really happened. Oh, kiss me. I want to be with you always. I'd rather die than be without you. I think you're going to want to come a little more downstage for this bit. I know that some of you girls think that I'm quite strict in my views no, on all right, um, No, try, uh, try unnecessarily harsh. I know that some of you girls feel that I'm unnecessarily harsh in my views on your conduct. <laughs> Very good. Really terrific. It's pure Miss Montrose. She's going to be a real star tonight. With the temperament to go with it. No, I mean, stop it. You're having an affair with her, aren't you? <laughs> Go away, Lawrence. That's why you're protecting her, isn't it? What on earth are you talking about? She was at your house that night. The night your wife was murdered. I drove back and I found my wife dead on the floor. That is what I found. Now, I have been trying to help Anne with the show tonight. She's not particularly well and you're only making things a hundred times worse. Look, Lawrence, she, uh, she doesn't want to see you anymore. But she can't find a way of telling you. Don't you realize that? I I'm sorry if that's cruel, but I had to say it for her sake. And yours. Sorry to be such a nuisance. Lawrence! You're never a nuisance. Really nice. Good luck, thanks. Aren't I? Of course you're not. I, I, I wanted to give you a card. Break a leg, or whatever. Oh, 
difference. What is it, Anne? What is it? Thank you so much. <laughs> it has indeed been an eventful year, but I feel that no review of its highlights would be quite complete without mentioning Melissa Barnett and Holly Vanell, <laughs> Go, Melissa, who took part in the inter-school debating competition on the subject of Is Sex Really Necessary? <laughs> <laughs> Their research was enthusiastically aided by the Ashminster College for Boys, to whom we all owe our most profound thanks. Never did two girls more richly deserve their prize. The lower fifth went on the school ski trip to San Moritz. Under the experienced guidance of Mr. Roberts, all previous records were broken. Five virginities, two pregnancies, and an elopement. <laughs> Mr. Roberts, needless to say, has not been seen since, which has been a cause of great personal disappointment to me. And me too. <laughs> I know that some of you girls feel that I have an unnecessarily harsh view of your conduct. Such is not the case. To show how liberal this centre of excellence is, I'm proud to present to you the Terpsichorean Creme de la Creme of Bishop Griffiths School. Do you enjoy the rest of your evening? Change 
in my next talk. Anne! All right, what's going on? Anne's locked herself in, Mr. Miles. Anne! Anne! Anne, open the door! Anne! Anne! Ah! Oh, it's probably her idea of a dude. She wouldn't go out in the night like this. She's probably hiding. I don't know what's going on. Oh, she's found what a bunk before. Girls, what's and she was a bit weird before Kurt. Where's she? Look and see if you can find her clues. But she hasn't changed. She must still be inside. Now, girls, go stop milling about. Stop milling about and concentrate. Who was the last person to see her? She was coming off when I came on. She said something a bit strange. What, what did she say? She said goodbye. Well, why would she say that? Oh, God, I knew it. I knew she was getting those blackouts again. I'm sure it's nothing serious. We all know Anne is highly strung. Now, come on, girls, get back to the theatre. The show must go on. I'll go and tell Miss Montrose. She hasn't done anything stupid, has she? She wouldn't. She was going so well. She was fantastic tonight, wasn't she? say in the note? Do you have a key? Why the hell would I have a key? Will you come here? I've seen you. What did she say in the note? I think she came here to kill herself. I told you this afternoon she was on the edge. You left before the interval. The bonnet of your car was warm. <laughs> Leave the detective work to Gates, Lawrence. Hmm? Well, why don't you go around the back see if you can get in there? Well, I'll does get she not help. give you a key? You're wasting time! Let me see. Don't be so stupid!
did you do it? You had the world at your feet. I just don't understand. Shut up. It's our fault. Your fault and mine. If you can't understand that, you can at least understand when to shut up. Hello, Mr. and Mrs. Devnish. I'm sorry, we need to have a few words with Anne. But you can stay if you wish. I'll stay, you can go home. No. Go home. killed Valerie Miles. That's all you want to know, isn't it? How do you know? How do I know? That you killed her. Oh, that's a stupid question. You have memory blackouts. You're not sure what you did, are you? You don't believe that rubbish, do you? Yes, I do. And so did Miles. Then when you started remembering, you became too great a problem. I don't know what you're on about. I hit her on the head. I did it. Is that what he told you? Miles? Anne. We can help you to remember. I don't want to remember. Can't you understand? I don't want to remember. Inspector. Yes. All right, Mrs. Devonish. We'll leave it there. But we'll need to speak to her again in a couple of days. You took Anne Devonish to the cottage, didn't you? No. I was at school the whole time. Ask anyone. You came in wet at the interval. Yes. I'd made several trips to an outside prop store. A witness says your car had been driven. <laughs> Lawrence? It was teenage fantasy. He was out of his mind with adolescent jealousy. Why? Jealousy isn't logical. I've been spending a lot of time with Anne. I was directing her in the show. Do you remember Lucinda Gray? Oh, yes, of course. She killed herself. She's very bright, very talented. It was awful. Did you have an affair with her? No. Why didn't your wife want you to teach again? Because I'd been stabbed. By her boyfriend. More teenage fantasy. Why did you follow Lawrence to the cottage? I'd seen Lawrence read a note from Anne. I was very worried about her. I followed him. Why didn't you unlock the door? You had the key in your pocket. I didn't realise that. You didn't realise it? I had a lot of keys in my pocket. Most of the girls had given me valuables of one kind or another to look after that night. Well, thank you for coming in, Mr. Miles. Interview concluded at 11.08. Goodbye. Good luck. Goodbye. We'll need to examine your house again. Well, fine. Whatever's necessary. Frank. He's done it before, Miles. A girl at his last school. 
Only she was successful in killing herself. You're making this up. At least that was the verdict. Her boyfriend accused Miles of killing her. But it was a tearaway against a respected teacher, so of course no one believed him. Which is why he stabbed Miles. You see, if it works, people tend to follow the same pattern. I mean, did he tell you he was going to kill himself as well? No. A suicide fact? Is that what it was? No, no, you're lying! You're lying! I don't know who killed Valerie Miles, Anne. But David Miles tried to kill you. Now, you've got to try and remember what happened the day Valerie was killed. Let's go back. She found out. Didn't she? Valerie. Just before leaving on a business trip. She was threatening to tell Monty when she returned. He said he didn't care so long as we were together. But then, the night she was due back, dear, sweet Lawrence came to pick me up from school. He knocked over Mr. Miles' shopping. And there it was. The same meal and the same bottle of Gortel that we used to drink together. I knew then that he wasn't going to leave her. That's why I took the car that night. Ah. Only down to the village and back. So he could be free of her and I could be free of the other bitch. The other bitch? Anne. With her goodness and her hard work and her meat grains. Here. She was in her kitchen. I went up the drive. I want you to leave at the end of this term. For God's sake, I'll stop! You won't, you I know will. you won't! You can't stop! She's leaving at the end of the year. Oh, what difference does that make? <sighs> Come in, Anne. We were just talking about you. I thought you might be. We've often talked about you. Then he's told you he's done this before? No. But I'm not at all surprised. Well, you will be. Oh, shut up! Both of you! God, you're mad! Mad coming here! This is finished, Anne. It's over. I mean it. I'll phone Monty now. No, don't be so stupid. Let her, let her phone her. Let me through, please. Well, don't you understand what that would mean? Of course I understand. I should have done this last time. Tell her. Tell her what happened. I don't care what happened. I don't care. I don't Hello? It's Valerie Miles. Yes, I'd like to speak to Miss Montrose. No, it's urgent. Valerie, stop that. Put it down. Don't you touch me. Just put that bloody phone Let down. Let me go. Go. Down. Let me go. Go.
you dead? I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know. 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 Don't touch me. Undress. Undress. In here! Leave your clothes. Wash and change. Give me your shirt. You'll have to. It's what he does. Well, come on! The woman next door, did she see you drive in? No, I, I don't think so. Well, get Lawrence's car. I parked it further down the road. Drive in here. In here? His car looks like your car. She'll think you've just got back. Well, go on, go on, just do it. Well, she's still in her kitchen. Yes. I'll phone her. What? Just phone her and don't say anything. And dial 141 first. Hello. Give me 15 seconds and then cut the wire. 
What? It's what he does. Hello. Reverse, you stupid bastard! You alright? to the car. Get in! Where the hell have you been? I've had an accident. <laughs> Quite a performance. Is that what you think? That's what the court will think. Where's the evidence? What did she do with his clothes? No jury will ever believe her. Clothes were in the boot of Lawrence's car when you came back here, weren't they, Anne? Did you take her straight home, Lawrence? She said she needed a walk. I... I dropped her at the edge of the wood. I loved him. When my grave is broke up again, some second guest to entertain, and he that digs it spies a bracelet of bright hair about the bone. Will he not let us alone and think? Here a loving couple lies. Who thought that this device might be some way to make their souls at the last busy day? Meet at this grave and make a, a little, little stay. stay.